okay, I promised a video, so I'm doing a video in public. Never done this before. Well, I have, but not like this. So, anyway. <sighs> okay, job hunt. So, I started my job hunt actually really early, but it was started with non-teaching jobs. So I started like in October, November, December, I was looking at non-teaching jobs. I was looking at a whole bunch of stuff. I was looking at becoming, I think I kind of talked about this in the JLPT video, but I was looking at becoming a trainer. I was looking at becoming like a supervisor. I was looking at trying to go up or maybe doing um, test work and textbook work and all this stuff, but I didn't get any of it um, because I just don't have the those fancy certificates that people have. I just I decided because I'm an idiot <laughs> to not get one because I'm like I'm not going to teach forever. So what do I need it for? Well, duh. In order to get higher, in order to get to a different position, but still in the related field, of course you need certificates and you need things. And I was just like, yep, don't have those. So, also, after I failed the JLPT, I should have just gone ahead and started looking at Akaiwa work again, um, just because. Like, it just, it was the right move, I feel like, to go with Akaiwa work, even though I was kind of dreading the idea of doing it again. Like, after thinking about it and talking it over with people, I realized that, like, I want a job where I can go in, clock in, clock out, and I'm not expected to... I'm not expected to do a thousand plus things. Like I'm not expected to do speeches. I'm not expected to do uh, prep, like a huge amount of prep work, uh, like I used to do for my high school. Um, I'm not doing projects. I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I'm not doing a thousand plus things on top of the job I have. I'm not. In, oh, when I did high school, I was also involved in like a high school group that I had to do extra work for and just all this stuff. There's all this different stuff where if I was to work for a school or if I was to work for say like an ALT maybe dispatch company, I would be expected to make my job my life. And I don't want my job to be my life, if that makes sense. At least not this current way things are done anyway. I, the way in Japan, it's not really good work-life balance. I don't know, they expect so much of you at like Japanese high schools or middle schools everywhere. They just expect a lot of you. And I was just like, I want to have a life. I want to be able to do things that I want to do. And I want to have the free time to do it. And I don't want to be expected to come in on a day I have off and do extra work and just all this stuff. And I realized like Ekaiwa would be the the best solution for that uh, for now is that if I want to do like if I want to get a TESOL or TEFL and if I want to do coursework and if I want to up my game basically and I want to study Japanese to get the JLPT I need free time so I went with a Kiowa work but I didn't apply early enough I should have applied in like January but I didn't really start until about February or March area for like a lot of the jobs and that kind of put me in a bind because my visa was going to expire in May. And a lot of companies are really iffy, about, sorry, are really iffy about like uh, doing that. They want like at least a month or two to process the visa work and everything. So, which is understandable, but at the same time, it was really difficult for me who didn't have a lot of time left. So there, there was a lot of stress and I kept going up and down and up and down for interviews. If you remember the previous video for moving, I was going up and down for moving, but then I was also going up and down for interviews. And so it was double money going towards all this transportation fees and all this like, oh, I had to buy a suit and I had to buy office wear so that I could uh, be ready for the job I would either get or also for interviews and things. So yeah, I had to get, a whole bunch of money just to get a job just down the drain and it was just not ideal so it didn't go according to plan there and I was so mad at myself the whole time and I'm still angry at myself a little bit about it like I've not been good to myself lately I've been dealing with a lot of self-loathing and self-hatred over the decisions I've made um, and uh, I still still like it's just still 
anyway, but back on the job hunt. So I went through a whole bunch of interview processes and I went through a whole bunch of job applications. I even like went to a, a what do you call them, a recruitment office just to see if they could help me get a job at certain, certain places. But then it turned out like, um, no, no, and no, like it just wasn't working out. And I couldn't figure out why. I was like, what is going on? Why, why can't I get an Akaiwa job? And the best reason I can think of is because I was three years at that high school and I came well recommended by the high school, but maybe at my previous job at Koko Juku, the fact that it was six months maybe might have only six months of experience with a previous Akaiwa, maybe that's why. I'm not entirely sure though. I, I'm not sure maybe my application or my resume wasn't that great, although people looked at it and said it was fine. Uh, and I had friends spice it up a little bit, like grammar and stuff, not like, I didn't lie. <laughs> but I, I had people like look over my language and everything and it looked fine and it was correct. And I don't know, I, I don't know. I made one in Japanese and I made one in English too, just to prove that like I could have a Japanese resume. But um, it just, I don't know, it just didn't work out for a while. Then finally, I, I realized that this certain Akaiwa I now work for has a program that does TESOL, TEFL, like teaching English as a second language programs. And I was like, yes, I want this. But there was some controversy about it in the news. And so I was really hesitant to apply and I was hesitant to go through this process because I was like, Ugh, I don't know, it has bad news attached to it. So, ah. but then I did go through uh, with the application and I went ahead and went through the interview and I really loved the human resources man who did my interview with me. And we had a really good discussion about teaching and we actually, it was the best interview I've had ever. Uh, he really asked good questions, like gave role play scenarios that weren't outlying scenarios. Like they were what would you do if you had like a little kid and he was shy or upset at the first class what would you do and my answer was basically like oh well i just get to know him and get his confidence level up i wouldn't try to focus so much on the actual teaching of letters and numbers because if a child is too scared to enter a room with you then there's no point in like trying to get them to learn you've got to establish a relationship first and the first lesson, that's basically what it's all about. And he was like, that is good. <laughs> Most people focus too hard on trying to teach and not trying to establish that. And I was like, yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> I don't know, there's a lot of things that he asked her. I was like, oh yeah, this is common sense. And he goes, most people don't know that's common sense. It's <laughs> like, oh, well. So it was an interesting, good interview where he asked the good questions. He didn't ask, so I went through several different other processes and interviews, and I noticed that a lot of interviews here ask the wrong questions. They're nearly not asking the right questions. And I think that's why the places I had interviewed before, I was like, maybe it's a good thing I didn't get into those jobs though. Like maybe it's kind of blessing in disguise scenario. Uh, what's a good example? Like the human resources man with my current day guy asked like, why do you like Japan? And what makes you so interested in Japan and all this and good questions. So I explained everything I loved about Japan, why I wanted to be here and that I have a support system here and all this. And then he asked more questions on top of that about my support system, how long I intend to stay. Most of the interviews I have with people at other Akaiwas were not that in depth. They actually just asked like, how long have you been in Japan? Oh, okay. And then no follow-up questions and no real like, uh, how do you say it? Like getting to know you as a person kind of questions, just kind of, I don't know. Like I'm really glad in hindsight that I didn't get the job that I thought I was gonna get because A, I've also heard some bad reviews later. And then C, I just, like, I just, A, B, A, B, whatever. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I'm really glad I got this Akaiwa job, and I'm really glad that it has a program I like, and I'll be able to go through it. But I just wish I had applied earlier. I really wish I had applied earlier. So here's my advice. If you fail the JLPT, go ahead and, like, stop trying to do Japanese English, or Japanese 
heavily relied upon jobs and go ahead and just go for a job that's more suited to uh, you as a native English speaker. And maybe if you've got tech field or experience things, maybe it's okay. But for me, as a teacher for six years, but without certificates, it was really tough. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for the certificate. And maybe after I do this program, maybe I'll be a trainer or maybe I'll be something else. But for now, a Kiowa teacher again, and at least for a year or two, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure how long I wanna do um, this job ideally too, like ideally I wanted to, like if I, if I like it well enough too, if something comes along maybe one, but I know for sure I'm going to stick around for at least one, if not two. A lot of people though have stayed for like three or four years at this A Kiowa, so I don't know, it's, it's a smaller A Kiowa too, it's a, it's not a huge like domestic A Kiowa, so that's good. Uh, so that's also why I know my bosses and I like my bosses. I never thought I'd say that, but I actually like all my bosses at the Sekaiwa. So, yeah. But yeah, the job hunting process was stressful. Waiting for emails was stressful. Waiting for a phone call was stressful. Just the, the waiting and the, the nodding up of my stomach, just trying to find something and just waiting and waiting and waiting and then sometimes never get an email back and sometimes actually you know what I am gonna call out one company the interact company so it took forever a to get an interview um, so like after I did my I don't think I got it video way 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 back in I think in December I was like oh I don't think I got it well turns out I did get the interview way later than I thought I would and then after I did the interview they said they get back to me within a week. And then I had to email them back. And I never received an email. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, and then I've heard that like the program I was trying to get into for Interact is actually kind of not good. So here's the thing. If you're gonna go for a job, um, like Interact ALT work maybe, but don't try and do the other things that they're associated with. Apparently it's just not worth it. And apparently it's just not good. And I think it's really unprofessional when people don't email back and they don't do a phone call back. Like, yes, it's a normal standard business practice, but it's also really bad. Like it's shitty behavior. <laughs> like it's rude. I don't know, ever since I've been in Japan, I think it's rude not to give someone a response back. Like I got responses back from everybody else, whether it be rejections, or whether it be like, we're gonna keep your application and we'll get back to you if there's an open spot. That was for a college actually. A college actually, like um, I applied for one and they were like, there were no open applications. So they said, they're gonna keep it, my application paper and they'll let me know if something ever opens up. And I was like, that's nice, but I kind of need a job now. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, um, that job, so there was, a, there was an opening at a, a university and uh, they rejected me, but they're keeping me in mind for other things. And I was just like, maybe a future opportunity, but for now it's just not available. I was just like, ugh. And a friend of mine who works in the university is telling me that like, I should try again. <laughs> I'm like, not now. I already signed my contract, so not now, but maybe in the future. But yeah, it was just, it was tough. It was tough trying to move and it was tough trying to job hunt at the same time and keep like losing money trying to do both at the same time. Don't recommend it, don't recommend it. I would say maybe if I could go back in time again, try and get the job hunt done first, just get it done and then move maybe. Like if I could do it over again, I would space it out or maybe move first into like, I said a share house, something cheap accommodation, and then do the job hunt. But doing both at the same time is just too much. Never again, never again. But also I don't intend to move from this apartment um, for a really long time. Like I think I may maybe change jobs in a year or two, but I, I, I don't think I'm gonna change where I live. I love that apartment. I love that apartment. It was a pain in the ass to get into. I'm not leaving it. Too much effort went into getting it. But yeah, so uh, 
I think that's about all I can really talk about without revealing too much information. Uh, sorry, it's kind of vague, but once again, like I said, I'm kind of paranoid, so I don't like to give away my company. Maybe in a year or two, <laughs> when I'm done with this one, I'll talk about it, but for now, not publicly on YouTube or on the blog or anything. So this has been me. I got to go to work. See you later. Bye.